Welcome to the Beyond the Reef podcast, where I talk to experts and researchers in the reef aquarium hobby, discussing a broad range of topics from corals and reef biology to water chemistry and equipment. We take a deep dive into our guests' methods, techniques, and top reef keeping tips. My name is Adam Sutherland, and I am the owner operator of Frag Garage Corals, based out of British Columbia, Canada. My guest for this episode is Ryan Cunningham, AKA Chummingham's Reef, based out of Illinois. So if you don't know Ryan, he is in his last year of residency, so he's basically a, a medical doctor. Um, and I think he is able to apply some of his knowledge of medicine and biology to the uh, aquarium hobby, which is, which is good to get some of that perspective on. I probably could have talked to Ryan for a couple of hours more, um, but we covered quite a bit of stuff. Uh, we talked about some potential treatments for Acropora eating flatworms in tank. We talked about his use of the moonshiners method and the success that he's had with it. Uh, lots of different things to do with feeding, nutrients. Uh, I think it was a really fun conversation, so I hope you enjoy it. I will link to his website and social media links below and also to an episode of the Reef Dudes live stream that Ryan and I did together about a year and a bit ago. Thanks to the direct support of hobbyist Bobby Heath, I'm happy to bring this podcast to you absolutely ad-free. If you want to support us, the best thing you can do is like, subscribe, share, write us a review, and if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions for a future episode, please reach out. And I hope you enjoy this conversation with Chummingham's Reef. All right, Ryan, thanks for joining me. Hey, man, thanks for thanks for having me on. I'm really uh, really excited to be here. Yeah, I finally uh, tracked you down. You're a you're a busy man. Yes, unfortunately, uh, been pretty busy with work, uh, still in residency, uh, in my last year here. So finishing up soon. Yeah. It must be like a tough thing to find a balance between doing coral selling and shipping coral and, you know, working basically as a full-time physician, like, Oh yes, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty difficult. Um, you know, luckily I have a lot of patience, uh, with my, uh, in, in my customers are really patient. So I'm really yeah. appreciative of them. Yeah. Um, but you know, there it's, it's usually like a month on month off where I do like a, a month of service and then a month of, uh, elective. So the elective months are usually the, the, the time that I try to focus on, uh, getting corals out and stuff like yeah. that. Nice. Yeah. That's not yeah. too bad. Um, yeah, you've mm-hmm. actually been the most requested guest to be on this podcast. <laughs> oh man. Well, that, that's, uh, I love to hear that. That's awesome. Yeah. So people, I people, know that. people, people are fans of you for sure. Like even if you're just oh, a smaller man. business, like people are listening to, uh, you know, things you're saying and content you're putting out there. So I think that's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Um, well, thanks man. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So I guess for people that don't know your system do you want to kind of explain your system just give a little quick kind of run yeah sure yeah so i have uh i have three tanks they're all plumbed into one system uh you know one sump uh the biggest uh tank is i would say about 400 gallons and then the uh i have a i have a drop off uh i am in my wall uh which is 70 gallons and then I have another, uh, like, I call it like a sump tank. Because honestly, it's it's really just extra height for overflow uh, in the event that my power were to cut out so uh, water doesn't get on the floor. Mm-hmm. So I have that tank too, but obviously it's packed up with corals and I got a nice big uh, uh, mangrove in there as well. Um, and then that's all plumbed into a Bashi uh I think it's called a 220. I'm not sure like if he puts numbers on it, but it was a custom build anyways. I, 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 I extended it out a little bit. So, uh, it's, it's, I think it's, uh, 48, uh, inches long. And so the, the whole system is about, uh, 600 gallons. Yeah. yeah that's pretty, um, pretty solid water volume is one of those smaller systems kind of a place you can quarantine in, or is it kind of like, like, how do you go about that? I have been very, uh, selective on on what types of corals i've been collecting recently um i do a pretty extensive like dipping process um and i i usually it's each each tank is pretty close to being species specific so if i'm taking in say like an sps coral which is extremely rare and usually i only take them in from about three people 
Yeah. Um, I usually put that in the non SPS uh, tank so that if it were to have any sort of issue on it, uh, I would be uh, catching it before it could spread to other uh, yeah. acros. However, um, I do such an intensive like dipping process, uh, not only just like debridement of the coral, like when it comes in like off of the plug and, and, and chopping off basically the bottom half of yeah. the uh, piece of coral, um, sawing it if, if it's like an LPS or something like that, and, uh, you know, then scrubbing it and then dipping it in bear for about an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, I actually lose about half the corals that come into my system <laughs> no way. Uh, yeah. from from my process, which is unfortunate. But, yeah. um, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd rather be safe than sorry because I've, I've, I've had – uh, to deal with uh, like all of the problems that reefers run into, whether yeah. it's acropore eating flatworms, uh, black bugs, white bugs, red bugs, you name it. I have seen it. Luckily, it's been about, I would say, since 2016 was the last time I had an issue like that. Wow, that's a good run. Um, yeah, so I'm on a good run, uh, and I'm just – I'm over, I'm oversaturated in, in, in the coral department anyways. Like everything mm-hmm. is just growing into each other. It's just absolutely nuts. Yeah. Uh, luckily, um, I found, uh, and or developed, um, an, an intake treatment for all of the above. Uh, so even Acropora eating flatworms, um, uh, is, is, uh, I have an intake treatment for okay. that as well. I'm, are you I uh, hold that wanting to dis- bit- Yeah. Okay. I hold that one a little bit more close to the cuff because not a lot of people uh, know about that. Uh, but it is on the internet. You just gotta find like yeah. look, look in the right spot. Yeah. But it was being used for a, a different purpose, and I hypothesize that it might be useful mm-hmm. um, in a uh, acropora eating flatworm uh, tank infestation, uh, where my friend uh, down south I, I won't I won't name any names, but. I went over to uh, bring him some torches and stuff, and like I, I, I looked at his system. He didn't think anything was wrong, and uh, I immediately saw like those, you know, uh, yeah. diagnostic uh, yeah, stigmata of yeah. the of the uh, flatworm inf- infection. And I said, "Bro, you got flatworms, like no question." But um, he was planning on doing some treatment for an, an ulterior thing. And I said, well, Hey, I mean, you could try to see if that, that works for the, for this as well. You should just probably just up the dose. Mm-hmm. Um, and it ended up working. So a uh, pretty, pretty cool thing there. Um, so all is not lost. The problem is, is that, you know, when you, when you dose these medications, um, you're losing a lot of that microfauna in, yeah. in, in the tank. Yeah. And then you run into problems with like cyano, uh, you know, dinos and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, you, those microfauna definitely, I do find when you have a good population, you just have a lot less film algae on the surfaces and algae, I think has a less chance of taking off in the first place because they get it at that, you know, micro level. I totally, totally agree. Um, I, I, so I, I dosed it into my tank um, because I had heard that it could also kill uh, Astorina starfish. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I had the same opinion as, as, as Jake, um, the late, late Jake from, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Reef Builders, um, that Astorina starfish are, are not harmful for corals, but however they can become unsightly. I did try it for that didn't kill any of the starfish but it killed about all my snails yeah (laughs) you know uh uh and i was hoping that it would kill the vermidids but it didn't kill those i mean you know obviously those those uh so like in 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 my system i have like aptasia very well controlled um what the aptasia i have it though the the spot that i'm having difficulty with is actually in the back of my Mm drop-off but in my drop-off tank i manage the aptasia with like about 20 um uh, of the correct type of the uh, peppermint shrimp, yeah. And then in my big tank, I have this beautiful copper band, which is absolutely wonderful yeah. in in this regard. And then in that other small tank, I have a bunch of copper band as well. Yeah. Um. So the three, the three, uh, like if you want to call them pests, which I I will call them pests, uh, would be like, you know, vermidids, which I feel like are impossible to uh, get away from. Um. Yeah. I'm sure there's a dip that you could do. Um, possibly if you were to kind of up the dose, 
of this certain medication, I think that that would be uh, a viable option. But uh, uh, so verminids and uh, asterinas and, and aptasia. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to uh, sort of gouge you too much on it, but I had accidental success with acro eating flatworms and fenbendazole um, probably about, I don't know, five years ago. I was treating for clove polyps. And uh-huh. uh, I had I had some flatworms at the time, not a bad infestation. And I remember checking one of the colonies that tended to be like one of their favorites. <laughs> you know, they always yep. have favorites. Um, yep. And I found eggs, but I dipped it and no adults came off. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Because like, how would there be eggs and, and no adults? The adults would have had to have been there to lay the eggs. Um, and then gradually, like, I just never saw them again. So whatever that amount of the ed- uh, medication that was in the, the rock in the water um, even so, eliminated the babies. Yeah. So, I mean, then you already have the answer there. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, so there is uh, the fenbendazole is an anti-helminthic um, medication, which means it's anti uh, like worm. Helminthic is like a you know, we use these medications um, not so much in the United States, but you know, in Africa, where people have intestinal parasites uh, with with worms and hookworms and stuff like that. Uh, in in those countries, we use them commonly uh, to treat uh, intestinal uh, uh, worm yeah. infestation, uh, as well as uh, hookworms and stuff like that. But um, in dogs, uh, very commonly. Um, this medication is used as a dewormer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's basically exactly what the, uh, what the medication is that, uh, my friend was using. So he had, uh, read that, uh, it eliminated clove, clove polyps. And I, and I looked at it and I said, well, this is an anti helminthic medication. You could probably double the dosage and get to the point where you might be able to actually eradicate this without, um, the, without the, uh, need for the dipping process that I had recommended him in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, lo and behold, after, I think it was about a, a four week process, he dipped, he, uh, he dosed it, um, once a week for four weeks, uh, that, uh, he was successful yeah. in, in eliminating them completely. So cool. Yeah. Very, very interesting thing. The problem is, is that it just, it kills a lot of stuff. Yeah. Especially yeah. snails are very sensitive to it. Any mollusks seem to be yeah. affected pretty easily. And, you know, um, my other, fr- uh, my, uh, th- th- there's a guy, God, I always forget his name. He's on Instagram, but, uh, he's got like a, a million followers, but, uh, He's in Mexico, um, and he has a beautiful tank, and he was straight up just dumping bear into yeah. his tank. <laughs> Have you seen that video? Well, no, I haven't seen the video, but I thought about it before because the first time I used bear, I didn't know that you have to wash the corals a lot better than you do with other dips. Like it really gets oh, into yeah. the pores. And uh-huh. I had dipped like an order that came in and I put it in the tank and I just noticed like pods, like dead pods floating all over the tank. Yep. And I was like, shit, all my pods are dying. And I kind of learned it, that it, the hard way too. But it crossed my mind that I was like, well, the tank was actually fine after this. I probably lost like a large percentage of my pods in the tank, but it made me think like, could you figure out the dose and actually dose direct to the tank with the Bayer? Yes. So uh, this guy, I, I, I will I will find his uh, his Instagram because people should follow him. He only speaks uh, Spanish, but mm-hmm. um, he's got a great tank. He he yeah. he just uh, uh, broke his one tank down and he made like this floor pond system. It's really cool. Um, but, uh, he, so he doesn't measure, he was just dumping it in. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend ran into a problem with, uh, black bugs and those can be notoriously very difficult to mm-hmm. eradicate even with that, uh, Melby, Melba mycin, yeah, Melba Melby, whatever, yeah. Mel- Melba max. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, even with that medication can be, can be pretty difficult. You have to go 10 times the recommended dose that you would yeah, find on it's like true. You do. I've, reef I've been there. Whatever. I've been there. Yeah. 10 times yeah. what the so, red bugs are. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, they restrict the amount of medication that you can purchase. So I was just like, well, bro, I mean, 
uh, there's this guy in Mexico that's just throwing Bayer right into his tank. Why don't we try that on your tank? <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, so we did, uh, we made up a dose, like just some arbitrary thing. And mm-hmm. basically we did it to like the visibility of the water. Mm-hmm. We, we dosed it to like the visibility of the water. Um, and the, the next day, I mean, his sump was like two inches of, all this junk, like, yeah. you know, Asterinas, uh, you know, uh, yeah, those worms, what were they called? Yeah, Bri- Bristol have, worms, things Bristol like that. Bristol worms. Yeah, spaghetti uh, worms. And then like the spaghetti worms yeah. and all of that. He had like just a film of it. He sucked it out. We didn't even do a water change. We just replaced the, um, we replaced it with carbon. Hmm. Fish did totally fine, which I was like, I couldn't believe the fish wouldn't get hurt from that. Seems like. It might, maybe it'll kill them slowly and yeah, like it could the long cause run them. with cancer or something yeah. like that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is sounds, sounds terrible, but all of his fish did really well. Um, all of his corals did, did very well. And so we did that. We separated that out by like uh, three days uh, with, again, making all of this up. Yeah. Um, three days uh, apart with dosing. We, we, we dosed for uh, a full month straight and he was able to eradicate. Yeah. Uh, all of those bugs as well. Crazy. Well, it's definitely a don't try this at home folks moment. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> but uh, there's, yeah. there's, yeah, there, that, that's, that's the thing is it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's cost and benefit to each, each one of these treatments. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, obviously best case scenario yeah. with any kind of treatment you want to do to a coral, you can do it outside of the tank, but it's just not always an option. So <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess uh, since the last time we chatted, which was on uh, Reef Dudes, um, I think since then you've started a couple things a little differently. Are you you've been doing moonshiners for about the last year or so? Wow. Yeah, I've been I've been doing moonshine. Man, I think it's been at least a year. Yeah. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. I, I can't recommend this uh, this regimen to people uh, more. Uh, I really, really love it. Um, I have to say, like the the day after that, I dosed a bunch of fluoride into the tank. I came down, and, and the corals were clearly like just happier. You dosed fluoride um, so, to the tank. Uh, fluoride. Fluoride. Yeah. Fluoride with an F. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, really, really love the program. People kind of get overwhelmed with it because there's a lot of like, I, I don't know. I I was kind of like thinking that I would be overwhelmed with it. Mm -hmm. But really it's just, it's very simple. You just start off with an ICP test. You send that in reef moonshine has its own reef moonshiner MS ICP, which is the one that I recommend. It's the more expensive one Mm -hmm. on their, on their website. I think it's $65 or something like Mm -hmm. that. Um, they send that into Oshiamo, you get your results and basically um, there's a handbook that comes with the program, but I, I, I actually never read it. Yeah, I, I just, I basically just followed these few simple instructions. Yeah. Send in the ICP, get your results, uh, get your numbers that you have for each of the elements, and then you take those numbers and you put them into the Reef Moonshiner calculator, which is an Excel spreadsheet, mm-hmm. and then that's going to pop out uh, recommendations for how much you should be dosing either daily or corrective dosing and stuff like that. You do the corrective dosing and then the daily dosing, you know, people are like, I can't do it daily. Well, that's fine. You know, Devin does it once a week from Reef Dudes, Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, I probably would do it more often than that. I I do it daily because it's so quick. I mean, I have, uh, you know, I have a 600 gallon system and my daily dosings take take me under a minute. Yeah. And my my understanding is some of those elements, some of the the metals and whatnot, they get used, um, you know, they're not bioavailable for very long either. And they they get taken up quite quickly. So you probably would see more benefit from the daily dosing. Daily dosing. Weekly. Yeah. Um, Totally agree. So you said you noticed a pretty big difference right away from dosing, getting some your fluoride up. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that is like one of the probably more crucial ones that no one really pays attention to. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the moon, uh, uh, my fellow moonshiners, uh, will, 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 will obviously pay attention to fluoride, but, uh, Triton, I think they just added a fluoride, That's good. uh, yeah. value. 
um, because they had the fluoride supplement, but they never tested for it. So I was like, hmm. what's, what's the point yeah, of selling this? Just but, throwing it in? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. Well, and that's, it's, yeah. And, it's, and, it, and Andre says it's a pretty dangerous element. And yeah. so, um, you know, he, the other thing is, is like Andre's super responsive. It's a, sm- it's a, it's a small business, which I think is growing pretty, pretty good, mm-hmm. uh, for him. And, uh, I, I, I think the program, I, I will personally never run a tank without, uh, without this system mm. ever again. No way. Yeah. 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 My understanding with fluoride is it has a relationship with iodine and I think one of the other halogens. And I think, uh, I heard Claude from Fauna Marin talking about it and it's like, it's a relationship that's, that's pretty important. But you were saying Claude visited you. This and Claude week. was supposed to come. Oh, he didn't uh, make it. Yeah, Claude and Alexander from Abyss, Claude from uh, Fauna Marin, and uh, Alexander from Abyss were supposed to come over today with Carlos from Hydros, but unfortunately, some, it's it's Saturday today, right? It is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I'm sorry. I never know. I just know it's a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were supposed to come over today, and uh, something came up, and they had to fly out. But they'll be back next year, and they said that they're going to stop over here first yeah. when they do. I'm such a huge fan of Al- uh, Alexander. I think he's awesome. Yeah. I really love the Abyss pump. It's it's, it's the main it's the heart to my system. So that's, that's cool. the pump that I use. Yeah. Yeah. And something uh, with the, I do the Fauna Marin ICPs. That's kind of my like most accessible, quick ICP here in Canada. Um, mm-hmm. And if you do the total ICP, you get some of the relationships between some of the elements and it's uh, it's, it's a lot, it's oh, a lot to cool. take in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it'll so talk Con- about the ratios. Connor, I told Connor uh, from, from Hydros, Connor Sloan that, uh, Alexander and uh, Claude were going to come over and he's like, Claude's going to sell you on the, on the Fauna Marin ICP. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'll have to talk to Andre first to see what he says, (laughs) because whatever Andre says from like the, the chemistry perspective, I totally listen to him. Mm -hmm. Um, He has a a lot of different opinions for me. I think from like the biology perspective Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't tend to listen to him from like the biology perspective of things, but, uh, we, you, you were talking about how fluoride is related to iodine and stuff like that. Well, that's absolutely true, just like how magnesium is related to calcium. Mm-hmm. It's basically any of those elements that are located in the same column of the periodic table um, can result uh, in them swapping out the, 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 uh, the ion for a different one in the event that that ion is low. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're, you, you've obviously heard of, you know, it's been so difficult for me to raise my calcium. Well, did you check your mag? Because your mag is probably low and that's why. So when you have like a, a hole in the magnesium department, you're not able to replenish the calcium because the calcium is being sucked up for what would normally be used for like a magnesium roll and things. So, um, very, uh, yeah, very, it's, it's, it's very cool, uh, to, to, to realize that. Um, and, and like I said, I'm sure in the reef moonshiner handbook, I'm sure it's full of very awesome information and like what each element is used for. Mm-hmm. But like, if I'm just shooting for a number, I'm just, gonna yeah. Shoot well, for the number. and the other thing is at the end of the day, like I've, Andre has said, I've heard him say that he doesn't really know exactly what elements do. Well, I mean, he knows kind of what elements do what, but it's, it's all of them working together that gives you the success. It's not like, like you can't say, Absolutely. Hey, should I just focus on, my level of my nickel or my, you know, like, you know, zinc or something like that. He says it's the relationship of all of them together. He's like, I don't know why, but all of them together seem to just synergize and, and work in a way that, you know, gives you color. Like what, what's the main thing you notice? Was it growth? Was it vibrance, like overall saturation of color? Like all of the above, but yeah. also I would say like the poofiness of the flesh, mm-hmm. especially on euphelia. I, I noticed that that was like just, the, like the day after I, I I did my first corrective dosing, I just noticed that all of my euphelia was just extremely poofy, mm-hmm. like just fuller. And like the flesh band was like poofier. Um, and I, at that moment, I was like, all right, I'm sold. Um, yeah. I don't I don't do the ICP every every month. You know, I do it every three months. Um, and that's fine for me. Um, you know, I was doing it without any, you know, before. So uh you know, it's, it's, it's totally fine to kind of, uh, make it 
the the way that's easier for you to do the do the mm-hmm. program. It doesn't need to be followed with a you know pr- exact precision. Um, I will say that uh, Andre actually made a post about rubidium mm-hmm. um, being helpful for um, mushrooms and. Interesting. Wow. I yeah. completely <laughs> agree uh, because I started overdosing. So I've always had a problem with mushrooms, especially discosoma. Mm-hmm. I've lost probably 30, at least 30. Weird. Like breakers. I wouldn't think of you to be a person that would lose a mushroom. <laughs> oh my God. I lose so yeah. many mushrooms. I was like, I, can't, I just, I didn't know what, 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 uh, what it, what it was. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I started overdosing the rubidium and ever, and and this is ever since day one. So I got into the hobby in 2010 and never was I ever able to keep, uh, mushrooms from day one. I was able to keep SPS. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I, I think it's because I'm more of like an, like an anal reefer. I think that a lot of people notice that uh, when they leave a tank alone, they don't do anything to it. The mushrooms do really well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that in those systems, they don't tend to have like a mixed reef. It's, it's mostly like a, you know, a little bit of LPS, maybe a bird's nest and some, and a bunch of mushrooms yeah, yeah. or, or some acans or something like that. Um, but I think that I, I've been hypothesizing recently, again, I can't prove any of this, but, um, that possibly, Heavy SPS dominated reef tanks, which mine have always been, mm-hmm. really, really suck up rubidium at like a rapid rate. And because of that, I've like, you know, I dose like basically 20 times the recommended amount of rubidium wow. um, from from the Reef Moonshiner <laughs> handbook. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's been doing great. Uh, I haven't seen any ill effects. Um, I've just really kind of bumped that up. I was like doing 10 times the amount. And then I just like, was just like, let's see how far we can take this. And I did 20 times the amount. I haven't um, done a recheck um, in, in a while, but my rubidium is always low. Well, what is uh, um, rubidium as an element? Can you, I, I, I don't, I don't think it's on the fauna ICP, so I'm not super familiar would, with it. I would have to check the periodic table. Okay. This, um, I, I do fact then, check episodes here and there, so that's a good one to uh, <laughs> look yeah, up. Yeah, that would that would yeah. that would be a great uh, a great thing to fact check. Um, I, you know, I don't have my computer yeah. by me. I'm curious Baby, to you look up? Um, like you know toxicity level, or if it has like you know if there's a certain point where you really have to watch out for it, like. You know, we know there's the more dangerous elements in the like harmful elements category, like tin and and, and arsenic and things like that. But I don't think it's right. one of those super hazardous ones. Um, you know. hold, hold on yeah. one second, Adam. The the food's about to come here. Can you pick it up? Um, uh, yeah. So uh, yes, agreed. Um, and uh, I will also say that um, when you have, I again, I I I don't have any like evidence for this, but I find a lot of my clients that have problems with their tank. Number one, ever since starting the Reef Moon China, it's, it's, it's been so easy for me to give advice to people because the first thing that I always say is check an ICP. Yeah. Um, and obviously I ask about the salinity first. Um, but uh, can, uh, can you type in periodic table into there for me? Yeah. Thank you. We need it. We need a Jamie. Um, uh, we need a young Jamie. Yeah. I, I got my <laughs> girlfriend over here um nice. graciously helping me out with uh with this. Um so yeah. uh yeah, so um I I always find that when they're having uh, a ton of problems with find uh finding out like what's going on uh with with their tank, um that uh, their ICP tests are always completely whacked out. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. And and it's like, oh, I'm having problems with green hair algae. I'm having problems with cyano. I'm having problems with dinos. All those types of things. Like I've mentioned the Redfield ratio, and obviously this is this is very important. Mm-hmm. But even with people with perfect Redfield ratios, com- like confirmed on uh, ICP, even with those people. Um, 
you you still have I've still seen problems with with people uh, having issues with um, with yeah, those, those, and it's uh, probably like we were talking about too, like the iodine fluoride, like some of those other ratios are probably like a big part of it as well. Um, absolutely, you know, people will sometimes give me their their water specs and be like, you know, my my alkalinity is eight point five, my um, you know, my calcium's great. It's five twenty five, and I'm like, no, it shouldn't be five twenty five. <laughs> like, like that's your ionic balance is not right if your calcium's five twenty five. Your seawater yeah. only has so much space for all of those, you know, those elements yes. to be in it. So, yeah. Um, yes, I totally agree. And um, uh, the other thing is, is uh, I was having problems with scallies and. Mm. Um, I had kind of went the Chris Meckley um, way of thinking that calcium wasn't that important. And I Mm -hmm. did that for about a year. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I ended up testing my calcium when when some of my gonies were coming by. My friend had suggested that, oh, it's a calcium thing. So I was like, well, I haven't tested calcium in like four months. So Mm -hmm. I should. I tested my calcium. It was 250. My all of my scallies, yeah, two fifty. <laughs> wow. uh, all of my scallies um, were were were. Sorry, my dogs are going nuts right now. Can you can you uh, put them back outside, baby? Um, all of my scallies were like bleaching out and yeah. not doing good. They were kind of receding too. <laughs> Um, and it ended up being the calcium cause I, I, I fixed the calcium. That was the only thing I changed. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it, it completely went back to normal. I have the, I have the uh, periodic table up okay. here. Yeah. Let's take a look um, at that. But yeah. Hold on a second though. In rubidium. Of course. I'll probably have to. get back to you on this because yeah that's fine I'm not, fi- I'm not finding it here it, it it's it is on the because usually like when i it's so it's the the the, the uh acronym is rb yeah um, i mean i'm just looking at the uh, google here rubidium is a soft silvery white metallic element of the alkali metals group um, alkali metal yeah i don't know which oh it's look at that it's in the first column. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it's in the same column as things like potassium, hmm. sodium, okay. lithium. So this can kind of give us some ideas as to, as to, and, it, and it's right next to strontium yeah. as well. So w- whenever it's in the same, same column, that means it has the same charge and cells yeah. will use, um, use, uh, atoms with the same charge interchangeably in the event that something is low because in the homeostasis world of things uh the uh the the thing that trumps everything is 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 ionic charge and the charge needs to be balanced across Mm -hmm. the membranes Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering if soft corals really really need that rubidium Mm -hmm. uh and so yeah i mean i i it all I know is that, you know, I only like to change one thing at a time. I'm not yeah. one of those guys that's like, I'm going to do five things because I think it's all of these things combined. I do one thing at a time. And that was the only thing that changed uh, during the time from when I was having problems with mushrooms. And now I'm able to keep them. Yeah. Now I'm growing them. I mean, I'm I mean that's really the only way we me. can really get anything we can kind of say is like semi-hard data from our you know, hobbyist perspective, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, mm-hmm. if you're only changing one thing and you're sure everything else was consistent, um, you know, you've got, you've got something of a data point. I mean, it's not a true scientific study, but yeah, I mean, I, I trust that. Um, if anybody else like listening to this podcast, if you've added rubidium and seen any changes, I would be interested to, uh, to hear from that about that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Interesting. Um, so just I'll, I'll move past this moonshiners thing soon. But um, are you doing water changes or are you kind of sticking to the kind of limited water? Change no, thing? the only the only water change that I do is, you know, I'll, I'll take out uh, water for a dip um, mm-hmm. and to, to dip an LPS to get it, you know, more poofy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, or, to, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll probably do about 10 gallons a week out of a 600 gallon. Mm-hmm. Um, in regards to making dip, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make a dip like once a week, uh, you, you know, the kind of either the KFC dip 
um, for my euphelia, um, or uh, I have the OA dip, the oxalic acid dip uh, mm-hmm. that I do for um, um, uh, 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 wellsophilia, uh, goniopora, and mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, seem to really love the oxalic acid. Okay, uh, interesting. Dip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I have some, and, um, and I, it's actually Jake told me about it pretty like before oh, any did. data kind of came out on it. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, I guess Julian Sprung is doing a study on it and Chris Meckley's involved in that. So I think we'll have some, oh, cool. some data. I, I think that's who's working on it. Um, but we'll have some data on some actual treatment process for it. So, um, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the limited amount of information that I've seen out there is like there was a, a, uh, a couple guys uh, dipping their Welsos in it. And I was having a problem with Welsos. Mm-hmm. Um, not Welsos, sorry. Uh what are they called? Scullies? No, no, not Scullies. Um, Acanthos? No, not Acanthos. It's it's the ones with uh, elegance. Uh, not yes. Welsos. Yeah. Elegance. Uh, that's that's the one. I was probably having uh, issues with, with elegance, and I started uh, reading to see if there was anything else out there. Because I tried everything, the KFC dip, all that other stuff, mm-hmm. and Cipro and whatever, uh, and, and Julian Sprung's Two Little Fishy stuff. And uh, – and nothing was working. So, um, I ended up, uh, you know, stumbling upon a small article on, I think it was Reef to Reef, uh, where some guys had used OA and, uh, they had m- measured it out to be one parts per million. And like, that's really hard to do. Yeah. So I just, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I, I did a half a tablespoon, um, for, uh, you know, 10 gallons. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, seem to be uh i kind of did it to to the tint of the water mm-hmm. um because it doesn't all dissolve it, it does actually i think super saturate and then uh whatever's uh above that point kind of just drops out of the water column yeah yeah um so uh i did it i did it to that and um man i i threw the well in there because i was like there's nothing to lose here these guys are going to die anyways the next day they looked excellent. The next day after that they looked even more excellent. Seven days later they looked amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started using them for that, and then I was just like, "Hey, I'm having problems with these gonies. Might as well throw them in there too. See if it works." Same thing. Huge um, difference. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Huge yeah. difference. Huge difference. I, I don't know what it is because the mechanism of action is supposedly very similar to ciprofloxacin, yeah. but yeah. we don't use OA. Uh, and, and ciprofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone. Um, OA is, is, is not something that you actually even use in yeah, humans. Yeah, it's not used it's, in it's humans. Own, yeah, less, yeah, and it's not, I understand it's not as broad of a spectrum as Cipro. It's a, it's a similar, okay. similar spectrum, but not as broad, so. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't gotten too deep into uh, the mechanism of action or even if it falls within the fluoroquinolone uh, type of antibiotics. My thinking is that it does not at all because all the fluoroquinolones uh, uh, have floxacin at the end of them, levofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, all of those antibiotics, mm-hmm. they all have, uh, they all fall within that class uh, that have that uh uh, ending on its suffix. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so that was really interesting to me. So those are kind of the newer developments. Yeah. Uh, another new thing that I've been doing is, uh, uh, due to the research of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of a friend of mine at CRT, uh, coral reef tank, uh, you know, Hung Vo mm-hmm. and Alan Vo. Yeah. They're, it's kind of like a dad and, and yeah. son kind of thing. They live over in Burbank. And um, so it's just pretty close. And he brought over like this squeeze, squeegee bottle and he's like, dump this in your tank. I'm like, why? <laughs> he's like, just do it. And I'm like, so I did. And I, and I okay. threw it in there and my whole tank turned white. And I'm like, oh God, what did I do? Um, but basically <laughs> he's been um, – um, uh, experimenting with, um, inducing the uptake of like coral foods into bacteria Mm -hmm. and like engorging bacteria with these coral foods Mm -hmm. and using like this catalyst, which is from, um, which is from coral and zoot, uh, and mixing all of these bacteria and, uh, coral food and fermenting them for like an extended period of time. And then taking that and dumping it into the tank because 
we all know that corals eat bacteria too. You yeah, know, that's obvious. Um, yeah. So if we can engorge the bacteria with uh, with these uh, food products like from Benepets and and from um, Fauna Marin mm-hmm. uh, are, is is kind of in his in in this elixir that he's invented. Uh, so I ended up buying all the products that he was using to make make this uh, to make this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, this and he gave you he gave the, the pro- oh look at that guy. Um, it, 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 and he gave you the process of the fermentation. Cause I would wonder if some of those food products would kind of break down and lose some of their nutritional value if they're, you know, stable, totally. you know, totally. Um, and fermentation might be like kind of the wrong word, but basically, yeah. basically like there's two products from Coral and Zook. It's like, uh, the Zeo back something mm-hmm. and this other, uh, catalyst that, uh, they sell, um, which if you add these two together, you increase the amount of, uh, bacteria reproduction rate. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's, that's their marketing and like how they sell the product. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, not really into that kind of like side of things like with marketing, but, you know, Alan came over, he was all excited. Cause he's like, I found a new polyp inside the polyp. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> but it's just like, you know, so, you know, so I, he's like, well, it's, it's the feeding polyp. Cause like, you know how, like, you know, you, you have your SPS and they have their polyps, but yep. then if you look at them at nighttime, it's like you, th- there's like a little string. Yeah. The polyp, axial polyp is kind of the like a super yeah. polyp. Yeah. 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 The yeah. axial polyp. And he's like, I've been able to express that ac- uh, this extra polyp um, uh, during the day as well. And yeah. I was like, well, that's cool because it makes the corals look cooler, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I was just like, you know, I just throw it in. You know, I completely trust Alan. So, yeah, um, I, I threw this, you know, basically smelly ass stuff. That, well, that's what tank. I was going to ask you is how bad did it smell? <laughs> oh, it smelled so bad. It smelled so bad because like he uses, uh, he uses the product, um, from, um, Fauna Marin too. Oh, it's called that like, stuff uh, smells horrible. I know what you're talking organic, about. Organic. No, no, not the organic. Yeah. Uh, the, the something S I, I'm, I, 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 have know, I know what stuff. it is too. I have it. I just, I, yeah, I don't yeah. even dose and it that I much because it, it smells whatever. so bad. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I it, he, he uses that, uh, and then the Coral Sprint and all this other, and, and a lot of products from uh, uh, Aquaforest and stuff. So a lot of yeah. these good companies that, that we're all kind of comfortable with, yeah. um, he's using all, all, of, all of that stuff. And uh, I've been doing it. I do it about um, uh, twice a week, mm-hmm. and it's totally awesome. Mm-hmm. The other thing is is that um, – Alan and Alan's very smart. Uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be on this, the podcast actually soon. We were talking. So, oh, yeah, cool, so it'd be cool, cool. To talk to him. awesome. Yeah, yeah so I'll, I'll kind of build him up a little bit. He's a yeah. recent Princeton graduate. Cool. He actually did his dissertation um, uh, in in like marketing or business or something like that on sales of coral. Hmm. Um, and so he's been hypothesizing, which is an excellent hypothesis, I think that. Uh, we can actually fight these bacterial infections that we're facing, not with antibiotics, but with probiotics. And mm-hmm. he has, and I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not stealing his thunder here, but he, in, in, in this little elixir that he's invented, uh, he has like uh, probiotics in there. Mm-hmm. And I, I will say that, uh, you know, issues that I was having before are not as prevalent as mm-hmm. they were before after I started dosing mm-hmm. this stuff. So, yeah, you know, probiotic and, and microbiome, like, mm-hmm. you know, film on top of the coral and that symbiotic relationship, um, I think is definitely there's there's something there. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, they're animals, we're animals and our best course of treatment is, you know, is, is micro is developing the microbiome versus just treating something with antibiotics, too. So. Totally. Um, yeah, I'm, totally. I'm all for that. And I mean, the uh, treating our tanks and our corals with antibiotics is a, is a bit of a hot topic right now. And it's there's a lot of fire totally. fire around it. And because I, and I, I think it's warranted, too, because, you know, it's like it's not to be taken lightly. You know, I mean, totally <laughs> like, you know, we're putting our hands in these tanks every day. And if, you know, we're being exposed to Cipro or something like that, it's, uh, you know, it's all it all compounds and could could cause issues. So. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm hesitant about it, but at the same time, I do have some it, of those tools. If I need them, it, I have them on hand. Yes, exactly. It could cause issues in the sense that we could be 
um, create and, and which is why if you're going to treat the tank, you need to do a regimen. You don't just do it once. Mm -hmm. You do it for seven days. Um, because if you're just going to do it once, then you're wiping out, uh, you know, all of the bacteria, uh, but not all of it. You're only wiping out 99.9% mm -hmm. of it or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the numerical value is. It's the same way most is. antibiotics are, uh, tr are you know, treated with humans, right? Like it's a course right. of a treatment. Yeah. It, you have to do a course because yeah. each day you're going to eliminate more and more of it until there's none left. Yeah. And that's – so you can't just do it. And then when you're dipping with it, you should start the dip with hydrogen peroxide first. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where you're basically dropping a bomb on the coral, yeah. And uh, Danny from KFC will, will will mention this as well. Like uh, you, hydrogen peroxide before and then after the dip, mm -hmm. um, so that if there's any bacteria that you don't like um, left over after the dip, then you hydrogen peroxide them again, so that that doesn't get back into the tank. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that's, that's uh, the yeah. most important thing. However, from the human perspective, there's no risk to us. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's absolutely zero risk uh, for uh, this to be creating superbugs in humans and stuff like that. Antibiotics are extremely prevalent in our water system. Yeah. They're taken out um, after the treatment of the water and all of that. So um, this is like a drop in the bucket as far yeah. as if you're looking at it from this perspective of like, uh, oh, I'm going to dump this uh, antibiotic rich uh, liquid down my toilet. Oh my God, am I going to create mm -hmm. a super bug, uh, you know, down in, down in the sewer system. And, and that's just not the case. Well, yeah. So. And I mean, I've been eating meat my whole life that has been raised yeah. with antibiotics. So yeah, you exactly. know, it's part of our lives, whether we want it or not, yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, okay. So I guess on, pro on the product front, is there anything else you're dosing other than your sort of moonshiners regime? Like, do you have anything else you'd add that's, you feel like you get benefit from? Well, uh, you know, the I'm I, I, I ran out of the ability to continue to dose calc and it wasn't keeping up with mm -hmm. my alk. Mm -hmm. So now I'm dosing two part. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. It's expensive. I sold my freaking calcium reactor. I should have never sold it. So you're it. fully off the calc because I would have thought you would have gone kind of. No, 50 -50. I'm on the calc. I'm yeah. I'm I'm the or a calc calcium is, reactor, sorry, not calc reactor. Sorry. Yeah. 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 The calcium reactor, I haven't run the calcium reactor. Uh, since 2000, you know, 19, yeah. something like that. Yeah, no point in keeping yeah. it then. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. you split between, are you doing like ESV or what's your, uh, I'm actually using Seachem because it's the most potent one. Yeah. 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 Like, is it a pre-mixed liquid or do you just, um, is it trace and, and pre, yeah. pre-mixed liquid yeah. Seachem, uh, yeah. fusion one and fusion two is the name. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Andre is, uh, using, uh, Brightwell, uh, I think. Seachem, 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 okay. uh, um, Calcwasser. Okay. Uh, which I'm waiting for it to be delivered. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I'm, I'm still on the Evil Empire, uh, Calcwasser, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to switch off of that and, um, uh, and get get going on this uh, Seachem thing. So yeah, that's about it as far as products go. Yeah. Uh, I re I re measured. Um, Someone came over with like a really awesome um, par meter, mm -hmm. and the par that I was getting on my Apex par meter was like 800, 900. Mm -hmm. um, he came over with this par meter and read at the top 500. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Are Was you this an me? Apogee or do you know what it was? Uh, it was the one that plugs into your phone directly. Hmm. Connor, Connor, I, I forget the I name. Think the Apogee is kind uh, of the better popular one that I've seen. They're not cheap. They're, you know, like, I think, well. Did you see yeah. uh, Telegram just posted about something on, on uh, Apogee and this other yeah. um, Visper uh, thing? He said mm -hmm. that they were spot on. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about buying that Visper thing for 150 bucks. Oh, yeah. I like mean, if it's, if it's giving you a pretty accurate reading. OK, so you're saying your par was not as high as you were thinking. Yes. And that was that yes. at the surface or was that at the peak kind of acropora? That was at kinda? the surface and that was yeah. maxed out on all my lights. And wow. I was very I was distraught. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know, because well, I'm so used to saying ah, I run at 900 bar, you know, yeah. and uh, and it's just not true. So now I'm retracting that. Uh, so I want to work with Kessel. Uh, to see if I can add some more par and see what we can take it up mm. to. Yeah. Um, nothing's bleaching out, and my 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 my. I feel like my torches aren't getting enough light down where they are. So yeah. I was going to add. Uh, I was going to do the track lighting, um, but I'm not sure that I'm going to stay in this house. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about that track lighting? Uh, no, but I've done some of my bigger fixtures I've made out of that 80, 20, uh, the extruded aluminum and it's super mm-hmm. nice. It's like basically modular. Like you can add more, more sections onto it. You can add bars, like whatever. So, um, but yeah, yes. not, not familiar. Kessel has, uh, uh, started making track lighting, which instead of having all the drivers and the oh, wires and all that I shit, see. So it's like a, yeah. they plug it right into your, uh, your what do you electric box mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. that's called so you need a you need a uh a, a certified electrician to come over and mm-hmm. install it over your over your tank um but after that they put the track lighting it's in the ceiling mm-hmm. so what you do is you just screw the lights into the track Bam. um and then there's like a little uh small little box next to it mm-hmm. which acts as like the communication yeah. port yeah like a little whatever um, that sounds so, cool i mean anything that gets yeah. us away from power supplies like um i don't know if you've heard about the crack totally. the kraken that coral view is oh, coming out god, with i, I want mean, the kraken so I mean, bad it's, man it's kind Connor of Connor has one at his house and i'm like <laughs> dude come on when am i getting mine yeah i mean uh, that's they, like they, eliminate... they started talking about that too early yeah yeah and now and they're making us all wait yeah, it's. I think. I think it's supposed to come out this year, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I was messaging them about um, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing pretty soon as well. So fingers yeah. crossed. Nice. Yeah. 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 Because then I can just be be done with all the worry of uh, of electrical problems. My my uh, my house this summer with the with the heat waves and stuff. I I was browning out, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it was. It was, you know, very stressful because there, there were two days where my house was browning out. Not, you know, I worked ninety hours a week at the hospital, so yeah, um, it 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 can get pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty scary there. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. Um, sorry, what do you mean by browning out? Uh, basically, like the the electric was fluttering. Oh, it wasn't okay. a blackout, but it was browning out. Mm-hmm. Um, where like the, you, you'd see like the lights would shut off for like a second, then turn back on. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is, is I have a darn Vectra, which if it shuts off, um, and gets turned on too quickly again, it doesn't start up again. So, so I you have to be pump. there. Yeah. 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 I gotta be there to fix it. And I hate that pump because it's just garbage. Yeah. I, I gotta switch that out. I was hoping Alexander was going to come over today cause I was going to try to, Moves a yeah. two hundred off of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Endorse that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the Biz is just the best pump ever. And people are like, "What return pump should I buy?" I was like, "Well, you know, if you have the money, a Biz is clearly the best one." I mean, it's yeah, freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> sounds sounds like. I mean, that's what I hear from most people that have it. It's like. I mean, I've always had backup pumps, like, so it's never been a huge issue if one goes. But I think if you have an abyss, like, I'm going to say that you're probably going to be good for as long as it's maintained well. It's probably just going to keep running for years and years, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. It's perfect. Every time I've taken it apart, it's in perfect shape. Yeah. Um, never had an issue with it stalling, which, you know, all the other return pumps I have. You know, surprisingly, uh, I find Jabos are 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 uh, pretty reliable. Mm-hmm. Um, that was what I was using before I had the Abyss, mm-hmm. um, and that's what I have in the back. I have two brand new Jabos in the back, and in the event that the Abyss were to you know malfunction or or I would need to replace this. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Yeah, Whatever. one of one of yeah. the guests I had on the podcast, uh, Leonardo's Reef out of uh, Holland. He's uh, he's all Jabo, like all all a lot, of, almost all his equipment is Jabo, and he's he says it's great. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, and his corals they're, look amazing. So <laughs> yeah, you know? they're not a bad company if yeah. they want to. You know, uh, from the from the customer side of things, I mean, it's they're probably kind of annoying in regards to IP 
intellectual property yeah. type of stuff because yeah. I've heard some bad things from that department. But uh, so whatever. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, actually. So something I wanted to ask you about, I've run this by a couple people, um, corals that have like the metallic pigments in the base, like the PC rainbow kind of convexa types, red planet, some of those ones I've found those for me lately have lost a lot of that metallic base color. Um, but they Mm. grow like crazy. They're, they still look good, but they like, like I've seen, you know, PC rainbow in some people's tanks where it's just like almost all gold and super metallic. And I've, I've wondered what, you know, makes that difference. And I, I I mean, I've, it's been suggested that it could just be par related, but, uh, I wonder if you have any input on that. That's exactly what I was going to say was par. Um, for me, uh, because I've gone to people's houses where the PC rainbow has been like all red. Yeah. Uh, and it's at the top of the tank. Yeah. Um, and I tend to keep my PC rainbow in, in a lower, lower area where I have the red, you know, branches and stuff. But at the base of it is yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually made a frag uh, of this stuff waiting to send it back to the Minnesota Zoo because they killed it. Um, <laughs> but uh, the it, it, it's in this little area. Uh, where it's not getting a ton of light and uh, it's basically all yellow. It's got like little red tips on it, but it's yeah. mostly yellow. And yeah. I'd, I'd probably say that it's got to be a, a, a par thing because it's it's near where I keep the gonies and stuff like that. It's just the only spot that I can have uh, yeah. frag rack in. So I would probably say that it's a par thing. Yeah. I don't think it's related to any elements or anything like that. I think it's just par. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I've seen tanks before that, and these weren't tanks that were particularly like the person wasn't going crazy with trace elements or anything like that but the corals just had more metallic pigment to them you know and and i don't mm-hmm. recall if that tank was particularly like low light or anything it just like the the corals just wanted to produce more metallic pigment uh and mm-hmm. you know you would almost assume it has something to do with some of those trace metals but i don't know if what we're seeing as metallic is you know, me- metal, it, me- you know, metallic, like it could right. be something that's reflected that just appears metallic to our eyes and reflects, you know, based on the, the blue spectrum of light that we blast them with. Right. Yeah. Right. And I, I would be more, uh, inclined to say that, uh, it's more reflective of the zooxanthellae. Yeah. And the, the, you know, the per- particular strain that's, that's making, um, making that metallic color. I mean, it could be related to, uh, uh, you know, trace elements and stuff like yeah. that. The problem is, is that it's so hard to do experiments, um, when you don't have, you know, funding and like, yeah, I mean the, the, the people that are, that, that come, that come the closest to, uh, actual like valid, uh, controlled experiments are p- probably the individuals over at, uh, bulk resupply, mm-hmm. um, because they just have so much equipment and so, and, and what appears to be a, a good amount of staff that can kind of focus, focus on that. Um, yeah. I've kind of fallen off from following them at all. Uh, ever since the whole Tropic Marin thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I would say that uh, in that regard, it's, like, it's it's just so hard to do, uh, like, valid experiments on our tanks. It's yeah. just really, yeah. really difficult because it's just so hard to keep everything stable. Yeah. Um, and so things change very quickly. Um, and uh, uh, you just have to, you just, if you have a thought, you just need to focus on that one thought. Yeah, just it's like we talked about one if, thing at if, once. You, if you can stand to do one thing at a time and really let yeah. it play out and analyze. Because, I mean, the other thing, too, is like a lot of the time when you're trying stuff, it, it's kind of in panic mode. Or sometimes you're in panic mode because something's going wrong and you try three things mm-hmm. because, you know, yeah, if some corals are dying. I'm probably going to do a water change. I'm probably going to throw on some carbon. Like there's like a few basic things that you're going to do. Um, you know, you're totally. going to test everything and then you might make a little adjustment to your magnesium as like whatever, let's say whatever it is. And there you go. You did three or four things. <laughs> so, you know, right, what was right. the cause? Like, yeah, yeah no yeah. one knows. Yeah. yeah. So hard. And, and it is so hard to be, uh, holding, holding back on wanting to change all those things at once. Yeah. Um, but when you're in panic mode, you got to do everything that, that you need to do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess <laughs> along those lines, though, um, you know, because this is the, the kind of uh, data we are able to collect. Is there anything, 
you have seen as far as pushing limits of certain parameters where you've seen benefit from it? Um, say like, like I know you're, you're a big advocator for elevated pH, but um, say like mm -hmm. higher salinity, higher alkalinity, anything that you've really noticed in that regard? Just pH. Yeah. Uh, pH, I think that once you go above 026, it's not good. Um, yeah. The corals tend to do okay when you're at all the way down to even 022, which is what I've seen people come over and say, oh, you, you, your, your, your salinity is really low. Well, my tank looks great. And mm -hmm. they'll sit, they'll show me videos and stuff. And I'm like, oh, no, that's pretty crazy. But I, I, I tend to keep my salinity at 025. Yeah. Um, and like you said, elevated pH, clearly there's a benefit there. Yeah. Um, there's no question about yeah. that. Um, and then, you know, the other things of like kind of pushing the limits, I would say nutrients. Yeah. So long as the red field ratio is properly, um, done. Yeah. Uh, I don't find any issue with what the actual numbers are just so long as that ratio is correct. Yeah. Yeah, and the red field ratio there's like a like it's only kind of one kind of comparison point like I think from what I understand um I can't remember what the study was but um it's an example in nature but it's not necessarily like like we know that there's a ratio that how do I explain this that seems to work well for our tanks that's somewhere in that ballpark. Like if your if your ratio is totally. super, super out of whack and the, you know, it's super high nitrates, super low phosphates. I've actually had that before where I raised my nitrates quite a bit and I didn't pay a lot of attention to phosphates and um, I had trouble with some corals. So um, yeah, there's, there's mm. something, you know, I think, I feel like a good system finds that, that set point and sometimes it's a little on the higher side and if it works for the tank, it works for the tank. Like, what are you kind of running these days? Like, are you testing much or? Uh, so nutrients, the last time I tested, I was at a uh, nitrate of 32 and a phosphate of 0.2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I find that like when you're at least 100 to 1, um, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I haven't gone to that extreme level where it's like, 0.1 phosphates and like 200 nitrates or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm sure you'd have issues at, at that level for me. And I'm sure you'll probably agree. Nitrates tend to be a little bit more tenuous in the sense that they're consumed more quickly than the phosphate where the phosphate tends to linger and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's, it's, it's usually pretty difficult to get to that level unless mm -hmm. you're actively dosing them in, in, in the tank on a daily basis, uh, which sometimes I do do that. I, I still have the Ludwolf Wolf uh, uh, sodium nitrates um, uh, powder, uh, which, which I make um, per uh, – Andre's recommendations yeah. and yeah. I'll dose like 40 mils, uh, in, into the tank daily until basically the whole liter is gone. Um, when my night, when I find out that my nitrates are low. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you consider I'll, low I, then for, for you? Anything below, you know, anything below, you know, 15. Okay. Interesting. That's, that's too low. Yeah. That's too low for me. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, because for me, because just because I'm so busy, sometimes I don't go into the tank room for like four days. Mm -hmm. um, and if if I don't go in, I'm not feeding, you know. So uh, if they're down at 15 and because I have so many mouths to feed mm -hmm. in there from the coral perspective, yeah. nitrates can drop out so quick. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I mean, I think a thing to consider based on that is you want that elevated nitrate because your phosphates are also elevated to kind of keep that ratio. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not, exactly. it's not, I don't want someone to listen to this and be like, Oh, I'm <laughs> so yeah, I've been listening. I listen to podcasts sometimes and I get an idea in my head and I go over the tank and dump some iodine. <laughs> you know, I'll go and do yeah, something, yeah. but it's like, no, no, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. high nitrates because you have higher phosphates. So yeah. Exactly. And for me, exactly. like my nitrates are a little on the lower side. They've been kind of in the, two to five range, but my phosphates oh, wow. are around 0 0.08, 0 0.09. Um, but you got your hands yeah. in the tank every day though, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, so I you have to admit you're, so. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're paying close attention. And I, and I'm totally on board with people running what I would, what, what that, to me, that's an ultra low nutrient mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm okay with people running an ultra low nutrient system, but you gotta be careful because when you go out for vacation or if you're not paying attention, 
uh, to the tank and you're not feeding your fish, that's your normal regimen. Then you know if you can run into some problems. But yeah, uh, if you have your hands in the tank every day, like like you like you do, then you know there's there's no problem running an ultra low. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna actually have faster growth. Um, from that perspective, yeah, uh, I find that the core that the colors are a little bit more paler, but that's you know that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'd experiment with raising, um, probably raising my nitrates again a little bit. Um, I just you know been just kind of letting it kind of sit where it wants to sit and see how things look, and I haven't noticed anything get pale. So um, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's just once you reach that level that is it's constant nutrients in nutrients out and it's detectable and slightly elevated i think that's enough for most corals to be happy you know and totally. by having it elevated more than that you're just really ensuring that it's going to be available and you've got a bit more of a buffer totally yeah and that's what uh natural ocean water is doing yeah so yeah uh obviously uh totally okay from from that perspective if people are wondering, oh, how do I, you know, most most naturally raise these things in the proper ratio? It's got to add more fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I always recommend for tanks that are suitable uh, to find a zebra moray. They're so docile; they are poop factories. <laughs> yeah, you know, you have yeah. to feed them once a week, and uh, they're awesome. Yeah, uh, good awesome, party, good awesome party trick animals. too. If you have friends over mm-hmm. or whatever, not. Oh neighbors. yeah, totally. They they yeah. love it. Yeah, <laughs> mine is mine is uh, uh, kind of sick right now, so I have them in a quarantine oh, uh, tank. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about him. Uh, I've had him since uh, 2016. I'd be really. Um, really hurt if i lost him mm-hmm. uh, i would imagine they live quite a few years hey like yeah, oh yeah mine yeah. mine is mine's five foot long I mean, wow holy <laughs> uh yeah he's he's maxed out like he's he's at le- he's at least four and a half feet yeah um i know that because he he takes up the whole front of the yeah. tank which is four feet and some and he doesn't go uh, after any smaller fish or uh-uh. anything and he like doesn't that. go after shrimp either no wow Crazy. Hmm. No, my hawkfish does. Yeah. Uh, but not him. He's too slow. Yeah. I mean, he's like and too pampered, really slow and probably. Yeah. 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 And, and super docile. So yeah. I love him. I'm working really hard to to get him uh, back into shape. But, yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, I can get there. He's been in quarantine now for about a week, and I'm I'm watching these little areas of uh, of what has been told i'm so bad with fish disease you would think that i'd be like a, a good fish disease yeah. person because I, i'm i'm a human you know physician yeah. but <laughs> i'm so bad with it because i honestly it's it's the least interesting thing to me mm-hmm. and um uh and my friend uh quarantines all my fish for me when i'm getting new fish yeah. so yeah. i haven't gotten new fish in so long but yeah uh, no we were talking about um, this before we started that we're both terrible with uh, house plants too so yeah <laughs> yeah so, so terrible with house plans and terrible with knowing anything because people think that they show up in my DMs and they're like, oh, I'm going to get the information about this, this fish thing. I'm like, bro, I have no idea what's going yeah. on because like, yeah. they all look the same to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I, I can't I don't know. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. So uh, what did you switch to for salt once you got away from Tropic? I'm on reef crystals now. Oh, OK, nice. Yep. I'm back on reef crystals after realizing that I don't know if you probably follow him, Sabella Fella, yep, and yep. Uh, pieces of the ocean. Yep. They use reef crystals. Nice. He showed a, a video of his Walt Disney, and it had pink hues in it. Mm-hmm. And I his remember mine. Look awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they look so good. Uh, I remember mine uh, looking like that uh, when I first started. When I first started, I was on reef crystals, and then I switched to Tropic. Um, Right after Tropic, I went to HW after realizing that that's, uh, I think, the oldest uh, salt uh, in the hobby and also the salt that's used by the University of Miami. What's HW? Um, What is that? uh, HW? I don't know. I just always call it HW. HW Reefer. Um, I don't don't, don't know what it stands for, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't have it in Canada? They might not because I've never heard of it. So. Oh man! Who knows? You never heard of HW? No, wow! No. Uh, that that's 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 probably the most popular brand right now in the United States. Crazy. Okay. HW well, prob- probably that and Red Sea. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I was like, ah, screw this. 
you know, I, 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 I read somewhere that they were like kind of affiliated with Tropic. So I was like, I'm not using this salt. Screw this salt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it, but I'm, I'm sure that's not even true. Uh, you know, I just I'm so butthurt still over. Yeah. Over the yeah. You lost a lot of coral. This was. Yeah, like I'll never get over it. Ago. I mean, I, I yeah. it, it was really the, the stress that, you know, was doing me. I was in the ICU. Mm-hmm. And I was just pulling colonies out, and yeah. uh, it was it was bad. Uh, but then after that, I went to Aquaforce. Mm-hmm. I thought that they were really great. Um, but then I came up with this, you know, probably again not so true uh, hypothesis that you know all European salt companies are tainted with mm-hmm. possibly mm-hmm. Uh, you know bad you know synthetic yeah. Um, because because the salt is put together they mix it together with all these different trace yeah. elements and stuff like that and when the pandemic happened there's a 400 percent uh rise in participation in the uh in the whole uh salt water industry and on top of that everyone was using tropic and that's yeah. when they kind of started uh having issues with with their supply and stuff like that and they opened up that turkish one yeah and I, I never was able to determine like if it was just the Turkish facility or mm-hmm. if the German facility was also involved. And again, I don't want any beef with these people, but yeah. uh, I, I, I've heard that they're that the salt that they have now is doing good for a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. I have clients um, over here using their salt still, so um, and and they're doing fine with it. So yeah. uh, I'm I'm sure they've remedied the problem. What they didn't remedy was 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 uh, was their customer base. Yeah, for um, sure. That, that's that lost a lot that's of what stuff. it sounds like. And I actually switched yeah. to Tropic recently, um, just making sure that it was um, the German, <laughs> the proper German factory stuff. Well, and I got good pricing they, on it, and I, I bought the big commercial bags. So, yeah, yeah. No, they, they they shut the Turkish facility down. So yeah. there's 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 no there's no risk in that that yeah. perspective. I think so. Yeah. Um, as far as the reef crystals, do you ever measure it before you do a water change? Like, I'm curious what the alkalinity and stuff is. No, you just do it. Oh, yeah. But you, like you said, it. you're not really doing water changes like, as, yeah. you know, as a large percentage yeah. anymore. So and I yeah. I try to keep it as low as salinity as possible in my mixing station um, so that when I'm about to to take out water for the dip, that's when I add the salt in. Mm hmm. And then it fills back up automatically with the hydros turning my, my mm-hmm. roadie on once it goes below a certain sensor mm-hmm. um, so that it doesn't, you know, precipitate out like everyone has a problem with. Because one of the best selling points from the Tropic Moon uh, uh, salt was that you could throw it in there and the quality of the, of the mixed salt uh, was the same as if you had just mixed it. Yeah, uh, where that's not true clearly with reef crystals. Yeah, um, yeah, and and reef crystals is so much more grainy. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Sabella fell is using it, so I was yeah. just like, yeah, you know, I remember my WD looking like that, and I'm like, it's the salt, and so I switched <laughs> over to it, uh, and I haven't had any problems with it. I'm liking it. It's it's there. I, I haven't really noticed anything. You know, n- yeah. nothing changed. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a different salt. Hopefully I can pull That's some all. more, uh, tips out of him cause he's supposed to be on the, the pod too. So, um, Oh really? Yeah. So Yo, if I can track awesome. him down, he's got like a couple kids and young kids and stuff and he's, uh, he's a hard one to lock down too. So. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, that's the the goal of this is just to kind of like pick pick at people's brains until they reveal, you know, their yeah. little secrets, because, you know, it's like listening to podcasts in general. It's like you're kind of just hunting for some things that will be like, oh, I hadn't thought of that or yeah, maybe I'll consider trying that. Like you get like little little bits of information and see what you want to apply. So and it's um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, most people listening to this podcast, I'd say it's more advanced content. So, you know, I don't really need to ask you what your alkalinity is, you know, unless it's yeah. something different. I want to know what's different. Like if you do no, anything, it's, it's not different. It's different. Eight. Yeah, it's eight. And I'm testing my calcium now. It's 450. Yeah, uh, I'm dosing calcium daily now, too. Um, so, yeah, nothing is different except, you know, I would say my pH and my nutrients are probably a little yeah. bit out of the ordinary. Um, uh, as far as your that, 
feeding. I think that's probably something, I mean, we don't really consider feeding products we dose, but in a way they kind of are essentially a product we're dosing. Like, are you feeding like a huge range of, of stuff still? Because like, I think I saw your feeding regimen at one point and it was this, 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 <laughs> a bunch of bottles and things. Yeah. So yeah. I switched over to this Allen, Allen thing and mm-hmm. I'm sure that's what he's coming on and wanting to talk about with you. Yeah. So I won't steal his thunder. In that okay. Yeah. I'm doing that. Uh, and I do mysis and, um, I do seaweed, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. I don't do anything else besides that. Okay. I, I sometimes I do flake the PE mysis, uh, flake food. Um, but usually I'm just feeding mysis and the seaweed. That's it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, w- I wish like, like from the fish food perspective, I wish it were more divor- diverse, but that's the one that they seem to like the most. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, it seems so bland to me, but yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, yeah, it's doing, doing what it has to do. I use, uh, this plankton that's collected in, uh, the, the ocean near here, um, in the peak of the summer. So I got basically feeding cool. my coral, uh, whale food. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think it has quite a bit of ast- astaxanth- 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 astaxanthin. I'm trying to remember how that said, but that's the, uh, the, the orange color that like crustaceans get. And I think that's why flamingos are pink. It's like the, that keratin, oh, cool. keratinoid or yeah. whatever. Um, and I wondered if it would uh, be bioavailable to, to the corals and actually affect coral color, but it doesn't doesn't seem to. Um, I've talked to a couple people about it, and I don't think it it's something that can be utilized by the coral. But at least my fish probably look, I'd say, a little bit more colorful. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's a yeah. great great food. It's a, about the same size, maybe a little bigger than than mice pe mysis. So. Similar kind of thing. Oh, so you can actually see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 oh, plankton. Cool. It's like marine plankton. It's like smaller than krill, um, but yeah, it's uh, you know a little uh, it's, quarter inch kind of size. Oh wow! Maybe that's half awesome. inch. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a good food. Um, are you doing any aminos? Like, what's your opinion on aminos? Yeah. No aminos. Mm-hmm. No, no aminos. Aminos seem to uh, fuel this bacteria thing. Um, so I don't use aminos anymore. Yeah. No aminos. There, there's obviously aminos already, uh, in the food that I'm feeding. Yeah. Um, obviously like aminos are just the basic building blocks of proteins. Uh, so it, anything that has protein is going to have aminos. I do not dose any, uh, any extra aminos mm-hmm. and Alan's going to come on. And part of his regimen is the poles extra. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the uh, coral and zooks, and I don't use that. Yeah, I don't. I don't throw it in the sneaky blue bottles, the mysterious yep. blue bottles. Um, yeah, the mysterious blue bottles. Yeah. yeah, but but apparently that the poles extra is aminos, and then he had an extra different brand of aminos too. It's like literally like twenty products that he's mixing together. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. <laughs> which 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 just goes to show like we don't really <laughs> know what's working and causing this extra polyp yeah. to be exposed, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean it's working, so that's what I'm I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah. As it's far kind of, as the feeding thing, it's like taking a multivitamin. It's like you know you're probably going to pee most of it out, but uh, some of it's going to be maybe useful to you. Maybe only the vitamin C. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I don't know how much time you have here, so I don't want to keep you too long. If you're I'll probably, out. if it's cool, I'll probably bounce off now. Is that okay. all right? Well, let me ask you because I usually do these rapid fire questions. So you have motivation mm-hmm. to answer them in the most rapid way possible. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we can end with that. This is how I end it. So, okay. So first question. And also you can answer non-traditionally. You can give me like a super weird, obscure answer, whatever. Uh, okay. So favorite SPS. Like street name? You can say, you can say street name. Species, whatever. I don't know, I guess. Like, okay, I, I got, you know, street name, I guess, you know, street name would be the Merlin staff. The Merlin staff? Yeah, that's you know? a sweet piece. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I love that. My favorite color is blue. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. All my shirts are blue. And yeah. I do it subconsciously. Uh, uh, I, I, I love the Merlin staff yeah, and, uh, my, my friend was the first person to purchase it off of Route 66 when they had gotten it in back in 2012. Cool. And, uh, I was the second person to get it. And I just love that. Yeah. I, I that think coral. those are, uh, Acropora Danae from Australia, but I could be yes. wrong. Yeah. I think yeah. you're correct. Yeah. 
It seems like Route 66 gets most of his coral from Australia. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't, I don't know them sure. super well, but I mean, again, being in oh. Canada, but um, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so favorite fish? Favorite, the, you know, the 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 the, the more deeper moray. Yeah, he's he's sweet man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite LPS? Oh God, you can't do this to me. I know it's I hard. I gotta say, I I gotta <laughs> say, acanthophilia. I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're it's always amazing. been my favorite. Yeah. Uh, I just love Scully so much. It's you know, I I, I say Acanthophilia number one, second is Scully. Yeah, you could say. I mean, you could sum that up to meat corals. Although I don't love that term, <laughs> yeah. but meat corals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I love all the meats. Yeah, <laughs> uh, favorite softy. Softy, I don't. Uh, I, I eat mushroom. Now that I yeah. can keep them, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, that rubidium, <laughs> the rubidium yeah, revelation, the rubidium, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, favorite light you can say like source of light or a particular model. Uh, the the best lights. I mean, I gotta say they're probably the Kessels. Yeah, um, I use the Phillips uh, Coral Care um, as kind of like my main source. Um, and I would probably say that those are probably a close second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a couple of those ATI Stratons, which I think are pretty similar. Oh, wow. And they're wicked. I mean, I heard that those things are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Favorite product line. If you were to use one product line for, you know, all of your chemical sort of side of your, like your salt, your, I know you probably would have said Tropic Marin like a couple of years ago. Yeah, no, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I gotta say, I guess, I mean, because you know, reef moonshine. I yeah, mean, sure. It, I it, mean, yeah, I mean, I would say the moonshine, and then uh, for that, and then I would say, you know, uh, probably fauna marine. Yeah. Yeah, I think Fauna Marin as a full product line, all of the things yeah. they do, pretty freaking good. I would say I would say Reef Moonshine and Fauna Marin. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, favorite aquarium controller? I'm not sure if you have experience with other than hydros. One hundred percent. Oh, the hydros. Yeah. 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 I remember talking That's to right. a rep from Coral View when the hydros was first made, and I think in like three times in the conversation, he's like, "Yeah," and then like we were testing it, and it fell in the tank, and it was totally fine. <laughs> and he like yeah. said multiple times, he was just like his big selling point to me was that they could get wet, and I was like, <laughs> "You know, I think you're on to something." <laughs> well, he is. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I I was an Apex loyalist. Yeah. Uh, for I would say six years, uh, I got them before they had the cloud. You had to build your own website, basically. To, yeah. it, it was so yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, but and and honestly, they were better back then. But the EVA thirty twos, they just keep breaking. Yeah, I haven't had uh, issues, it, but I've I hear about them pretty regularly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you haven't swatched swapped out that resistor yet, I highly recommend mm, it. Okay. Um, you you should just get on it. Um, and, and be ahead of it. I, I I was I was burning one out uh, once a year. Wow. I, maybe it's because of the humidity. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. Okay. But yeah, I'm a hydros guy now. Cool. Good to know. Uh, favorite wave pump. Gotta say, I, I hate saying this, but like I gotta say Jabo. Yeah. Sweet. Another, yeah. Another I just I just, Jabo. I just <laughs> you know if, if 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 I if I could afford it. Uh, which if I wasn't so invested in the Jabo side of things, I could, uh, it would be the, re- the, the Octo pulse. Mm-hmm. Those are sweet. Definitely. Those are really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And if I had a big enough tank, it would be that abyss, that gigantic, whatever thing that they have, yeah. that like cannon. Yeah. I wish I could have one of those, yeah, but there's wild. no way it would work in my tank. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next one is, uh, what's your most hated pest? Oh, Apecasia. Yeah. Okay. Apecasia. I yeah. hate Apecasia. They're really I stupid. Just, <laughs> I hate them so much. They could yeah. live in toilet water. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just they're the cockroaches of the of the reef aquarium are. world, aren't they? <laughs> they are. And 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 it's not even like it's it's just that 
if you lose your shrimp or you lose your copper band, they just sh- start showing yeah, up. Yeah, you know? true. Yeah. So uh, if, if you can control them in, in the display, which is how I do it, uh, it's fine. And I, for some reason, I don't see them in my sump. Hmm. They're not in my sump. I don't know why yeah. they're not there. Uh, but yeah, so. It, yeah, it, maybe it, some peppermints went down the overflow and you got a few down there and you don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Possible. Yeah possible yeah okay last question this is kind of more of a thought exercise um so if you had the financial means the life kind of situation to set up a polo style reef would you do it yes but i wouldn't do it how he did it yeah i would i would uh i would have it in like a grow house like a greenhouse Mm mm-hmm and it would be like a big pool. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I would, and it would be my pool to go swimming in. But it would be like really deep and yes. But lit yes, with natural would, light. Yeah, it would yeah. like natural light. But I would have the supplements too. Yeah. For like when I, you know, when people, um, you know, w- w- when I for nighttime. Yeah. And stuff. Totally. So totally. I could have the blue light at nighttime. Yeah. And 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 really see the corals. But that's how I would do it. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, I like the different takes on it. Some people have said like they would they would do it, but they would want it to be a public available, you know, situation where people could, you know, <laughs> come and check probably it out. be good to yeah. have it there. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. but uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I hope to see it in person one day. Yeah. Yeah. OK, cool, man. Well, thanks for your time and uh, finally thanks, getting together with me. Um, really and, appreciate it. Yeah. Man. Uh, and I, I appreciate yeah. your patience with me. Uh, it's been crazy with the residency and everything yeah. so no all good man all good thank you cool. okay well let's do this again sometime absolutely Appreciate absolutely yeah. sounds good man thanks man thanks for having me yeah. on and and uh if anybody has any questions or anything uh you can pop into my dms on instagram uh chummy hands reef yeah check sweet out. appreciate right. it thanks adam yeah. talk to you soon have a great night you too bye thank you for listening to this episode of beyond the reef with Ryan Cunningham of Chummingham's Reef. Make sure you check out his amazing corals at chummingham'sreef.com. I will link to the resources and products discussed in this podcast in the show notes. And if you have any suggestions for future guests, want to just ask us a question, make a suggestion, make a criticism, whatever you want to say, feel free to reach out at beyondthereefpod at gmail.com. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and leave us a review. And if you're looking for high quality aquacultured corals in Canada, please check us out at fraggarage.ca. Hope to hear from you soon.